Episode four of Amazon's Rings of Power, The Great Wave. It's quintessential rings of power, bearing all the classic hallmarks of this series. Everything from blatantly ripping off Peter Jackson's dialogue with random smatterings of fortune cookie wisdom, to heavy-handed allegory, to, of course, these lifeless, uninspired visuals. Rings of Power cinematography absolutely fails to do its one and only job, and that's to tell this decidedly non-Tolkienian story in a visually interesting way. This is just adding further insult to injury in this desecration of Middle Earth. Now, Episode 4 embodies this failure perhaps even more than the previous three episodes, as its visuals completely lack any subtlety, understanding of what makes a scene special, and at times are just laughably fake. So let's break down today each one of these issues, starting with its visual lack of subtlety. This issue seems most apparent in the show's most predictable scene, where Theo searches the abandoned town for goods to bring back to his people. As he walks through the street, a local dining hall is taking up nearly half of the frame, practically begging to be explored. As Theo explores this hall, the door closes behind him and a figure flashes by the screen. While he looks around, he is kept on the left third of the frame, leaving almost two-thirds of negative space on the screen. It's a tired old trope from horror flicks, allowing those other two-thirds of empty frame for something to jump out from. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens here. After a brief fight with the orc, Theo escapes hiding in a well. When he re-emerges, it's nighttime and the camera follows him on a steady cam on a oneer or single long take. Just as in the previous setup, at the end of this wonder, Theo is again framed in that left third of the screen, leaving that other two thirds as negative space for something to jump out and have our jump scare and grab him from. This sort of overly simplistic framing not only fails to tell the story, but it actively detracts from it, telegraphing to the audience exactly what will happen before it happens, ruining any element of surprise that it might have otherwise had. To rework this, we should draw the viewer into the moment and into the drama of this escape. And a simple way of doing this, while still getting that long one take that they were after, would be to flip the scene, keeping Theo squared up and facing the camera for most of the sequence, especially at that end, where instead of having the negative space for the jump scare, the orc could burst into the frame, catching both Theo and the viewer off guard. Now let's take a look at the lack of understanding what makes a moment special, with this scene here with our two heroes escape from the orcs. The entire sequence from beginning to end is in slow motion, and when Arondir turns and catches the arrow, there's nothing really all that dramatic about it. The shot itself is well executed in isolation, and his action of catching the arrow and turning around to fire it on his pursuers, it is really cool, but it should feel more epic than it is. The obvious and simple fix to this is to not overuse special camera tricks like filming in slow motion with high frame rate cameras. Keeping most of the sequence in that traditional 24 frames, switching to slow motion only for his big moment would have greatly improved the impact it would have had. Now to see an example of how a similar scene with a similar situation would have handled this, let's look at Boromir's last stand in The Fellowship of the Ring. For most of the sequence, it's filmed in traditional 24 frames a second, keeping that tension on the action high. Then when he falls, it switches to the slow motion, giving more weight and importance to that moment. Whereas if the entire sequence had been filmed in slow motion, like in Rings of Power, it just wouldn't have had that same impact. Now let's examine why this show has a tendency to look so fake, taking the scenes in Moria as an example. Similar to my breakdown of the visual problems in Obi-Wan Kenobi, we're simply watching actors play against a flat background that, despite the depth that might be put into the digital background, it still is projected on a flat wall. So whether we recognize it immediately or not, we as the viewer are subconsciously aware that the image itself is flat, which is in contradiction to what is being projected onto the background, causing us to recognize it as fake. So how could we reduce this effect? Well, similar to my fix to Kenobi, to create as much depth and separation in the image as possible, avoiding wider lenses and adding as many real structures to the shot as possible. Additionally, they should avoid using camera maneuvers that are designed specifically to interact with the backgrounds themselves. Like in this shot here, where the Rings of Power uses a vertigo zoom for Elrond's point of view. 
The problem with using this technique is that vertigo zooms are designed to push and pull the background and the foreground of the image around, manipulating the size and perspective of each, creating unnerving effects like this. Now, when it's applied to a fake digital background, it creates a different and more unreal effect and one that just doesn't look good and it should be avoided altogether. Well, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and share it around. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. And let me know down in the comments, what did you think of episode four of Rings of Power? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn.